Hey, it's Captain Greg here. I'm going to show you how to do a butt wrap on a pole that a man's going to use for ballyhoo fishing. It's going to be a four inch butt wrap and it's going to be a chevron. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Uh, the guy who taught me how to do this, I learned 15 years ago. I know a lot of people do it differently than I was taught. That's okay. As long as the final product comes out the same, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Um, typically when I'm doing a rod, this rod's going to have uh, silver and blue with a black wrap. So down here on the butt wrap, we're going to start with uh, the first layer is going to be silver. Then we're going to do black. Then we're going to do silver. Then we're going to do black. And then we're going to do silver. And then I might do a silver weave at the end as well, but I'll show you all that. So the first thing you have to do is you got to do the layout. So uh, on these chevrons uh, to lay it out, the first thing I'm going to do is take some blue masking tape and I'm going to mark, put a mark on the pole approximately an inch from the end of the under wrap. And then I'm going to do the same down here and do an inch. And then I'm going to take the masking tape. And the reason I use an inch is because the chevron is done on, on uh, one inch on centers. So it'll be one inch on centers with the uh, reel seat up. And then it'll be one inch on centers with the reel seat down. So that the crisscross is, is on centers. And when someone's holding the pole, the center line of the wrap is on the same center line as your hand. So th this is the first part of the operation. We're going to just take the tape and put it on that one inch line and we're going to wrap it around the, the pole. No big deal. This is all going to come off at the end. This all comes off. And the reason some people don't put the masking tape, um, I love the masking tape because we're going to put a two way tape on, on top of this masking tape to hold the thread as we do the, the chevron. And when you go to take that two way tape off by being on the masking tape, it comes off a lot easier. So you don't end up with glue all over, uh, all over everything. So that's pretty much it for that. Now, we want to have the marks on center for, for uh, this next procedure. So I have, I cheat. So everyone wonders how I can get my guides on so good. I've put a laser on my, on, and people call these lathes. I wouldn't call it a lathe. I call it my spinner. But I have a, a laser on top of my spinner. And I go over here and I find the middle of the, of the, um, real seat and you you can see that I've got this center and then I come over here and I and I get a mock on the pole from the laser and I put a mock here and I put a mock here and then I invert it 180 degrees and I use my laser again and what's nice on this side is all these real seats have this little groove machined in for this to move back and forth. Well, that's the actual opposite side of the real seat. And then I do the same on this side. I put a mock and I put a mock. So now we have the, the start of our layout. Um, we, we've got mocks on both sides and we're ready to do the layout on the actual material that's here. And to do that, we need to take the, the pole out of the lathe and we have a layout tool that we use for doing this next op part of the operation. So now we need to put layout lines on the pole um, so that we can make uh, the start of where the the butt wraps going to be. So you need the same starting point. So I always use my real seat up against this part of my fixture. And then you lay this on top of 
the uh, on the rod and and I also slide this scale up against that so when I inverted 180 degrees to do the other side we have the same stop in both places so now being as old as I am I'm a little blind so I got to put the cheetahs on and then you go over here and we're going to do every half line here so here's a half line now we're going to go to here and we're going to give it another one and then we're going to go to here and give it a line we're going to go here and give it a line we're going to go here and give it a line here and give it a line here and give it a line and then here and give it a line now the the material you know you can if you look really hard you can see the sharpie lines that are on that blue but once the once the chevron's on there that'll all be covered with with other line you won't see the the chevron i mean the uh sharpie lines so now we're going to invert 180 degrees to our other mocks and we're going to go to the same point this one's not lined up quite as good but it's good and now we're going to go here we're going to go on the on the inch lines so there's an inch 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 in the first when the first set of threads you put on it uh, to find these marks is very difficult sometimes and um, you kind of go blind but once you get it started it goes pretty easy but you know some people use a white um, a, a white china marker to put those on but I found in the past that when you use the china marker sometimes it bleeds and you get this white stuff in your uh, in your um, layout and I don't really like the that that look so now we're all got the layout done now it's time for the two-way tape I use 3m 15 pound tape and you just you just put it over the the mask and tape area and you uh, roll this around and you know like that there's no there's no real big deal on um, on how you do that and on my particular lathe I take the drive belt off so that I can I don't get all worn out from spinning this when the drive belts on it's very difficult to spin and we're going to put it right over the mask and tape this side doesn't matter as much because when we're all done and I put this all together this cork is going to go on here like that so you're going to see a bunch of thread outside of the blue area that all comes off after after I put a coat of epoxy on I cut all that off and then this slides on and, and we actually finish the, the butt wrap so the first color we're going to do is silver so we're going to start the first uh, couple of wraps here so the first the first five layers are going to be like it was a diamond and not a chevron that's how you get started so um, so there's my crisscross line that I started with there's the other crisscross line and you can see that it's very difficult to see these marks so the first couple layers you got to really take your time so that when you're done everything looks straight and it's not it's really uh, th this color which is really a popular color this blue uh, everybody that has me build them a rod in this blue says oh that's my color you can't do this color anymore and um, but you know what I say to them we're gonna do blue if somebody wants blue they get blue. and I'm sure you're not gonna see this on the camera you know when you first time you're doing this you might use a China marker which will mark it in white um, if you go to try this yourself uh, so that you uh, you can see these lines because if you don't hit hit these lines the the, the 
the uh, Shopee lines correctly, what will happen is the it won't be straight. The uh, the X's will end up being all over the place, and it just won't look. Uh, you know, I was a machinist, and I worked in thousandths and tenths of a thousandth of an inch all the time. For me, it's got to be straight. So there's the first wrap. That one's done. Now to do this next wrap, it's much easier because I'm going to follow the lines that I have there already. And I'm going to lay that material right in beside that line that's already there. And, you know, there, could, there might be a couple little spaces here after I get, because I'm going to do five, five wraps here. Um, there might be a couple little spaces, but I've got a little tool that I'm going to push all these lines together to make it look like I want it to look. So we went, we went, uh, so going back on this one, on, on a diamond, you go both sides of the line. When we do the chevron, we're only going to go on one, the front side of, of the lines that are left. So what happens is you're doing this, it, the line wants to slide down towards my fingers. It doesn't want to stay up on, on the line for some reason, because it, it's where it's the tightest. So when it comes towards me, the line gets the loose, is looser, and therefore wants to sink down instead of staying up where I want it. But this is the way I was taught and I really haven't, uh, I really haven't tried uh, too much more, because I'm looking for something to do on a windy day here in the Florida Keys and in New England when I'm up there fishing. So there we go. We got our five wrap first wraps on. Now we take what I call the magic tool, and we just kind of run it all together so that. We got nice tight lines. If you don't, if you don't get started correctly and have nice tight lines in the beginning, at the end, it it will get away from you and it won't. Well, it won't look good for me. It might look okay for you, but it doesn't look okay for me. Like right here, you see how there was a little space there, and and I just don't like that. I like it nice and tight. All right. Now, the proof in the pudding, we want to double check our, our center lines and see if it's all, all the diamonds are on the center line, and that looks really good. And, you know, no, like I said, no one's ever going to double check this kind of stuff. But for me, when, when I sell this to a customer, I want him, when he's holding that rod in his hand, I want those points right on center line. So the next thread that's going to go on is, is an, an A thread. So now we've done crisscross on, on, the, on the diamond. So we got a diamond on there first. So you can see that that's a diamond. But on a chevron, the, all of the line is going to wrap on this side and this side coming back. There's, we're not going to go on the back sides anymore. So the pattern is going to go that way. So again, it's uh, really simple. We drop that line right in to where we were. And, and the first time we went five wraps, the rest of the wraps are all four. Uh, don't ask me why he has me, had me do it that way. Um, but So if you're doing a diamond, the, the, the logic is that the center line of the diamond would be between the two wraps. I, I understand why, but you know, anyways, I do five wraps on the first one. Now coming back this way, we're going to be on this side all the time. So we got one done. We got three more to go on this side. My friend that taught me how to do this, if I did something wrong, he'd come over with a razor blade. I'd be an hour into the job and he'd cut the whole thing right off. Tell me to start again. And I was a volunteer in that shop. That's a true story. Busy. All right, so we got four wraps done in the black. Now we're going to get out the magic tools, tighten it up. 
and then we're going back to do silver. So what's really good is once you get this first black on, I mean, the, 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 the first part of the chevron on, it really, uh, nothing seems, you know, you, you can push up against it and it goes up really nice against the silver and it stays nice and tight. The reason this is going so fast is the diameter of this pole is smaller than a lot of poles that I build. So you don't have to twist it quite as much. So we got, after this right here, I got to tighten everything up and then there'll be four more blacks and four more silvers and this butt wrap will be complete. So now the last thing that I do um, on some rods, and this is all freehand, is I'll go back with the silver and I will do a crisscross pattern. So we want to be in, in the center of what is already there. And this is all really, I freehand all this in. And you can see already how the extra silver between these wraps really makes the blue jump off that pole. This particular blue, and when I, I'm going to coat this shortly, uh, this particular blue, when you coat it with, um, and I use flex coat. When I coat it with flex coat, it kind of changes to a different color. And, um, and it, uh, it, it will, it'll have a little different color to it. So don't be surprised when it, when it gets coated, it's going to change so, here. So now that the wraps all on there, I'm going to, I have a little alcohol burner. I actually burn, burn it with the alcohol burner, all these spots, and then I mix up some flex coat and I'm going to coat all that. Some people would put the guides right on now and then start coating and just coat the guides on the rods. That's not the way I was taught. The way I was taught is you put the under wrap on, you coat the under wrap, you let that dry, finish, uh, finish the, the foregrip, and away you go. So if you look at a lot of rods where, where this foregrip would come, there'd be a bunch of black thread right here. And that black thread, so a lot of people put this on and then do all of this work. When this rod's done, the butt wrap's gonna come right out of the foregrip. There'll be no, no space there like a lot of people have of black thread. There'll be black thread up here with a blue ring. I mean, a, uh, yeah, black with a blue ring and a silver ring will be up here when we're all done. But that and now we're going to mix up some flex coat. One pump of each. And when you mix some flex coat, when you mix it, it turns a uh, gray color and you know you've mixed it enough when it turns clear and you don't want to beat this you know you don't want to whip um, the epoxy you want to stir it smoothly and and just you know don't get too don't go crazy in in whipping it up so it's just started to turn clear again right now so that's that's ready to go uh, this finish here after you put it on um, four hours later you can put another coat on so I've, I alcohol burned everything and now I've started the, the coating process of the uh, butt wrap um, and this will allow me to get rid of all the two-way tape and all this other stuff once this dries up, the, it, you know, the stuff will be there to stay, and then we can put the foregrip on and, and finish it. So we're going to pick up on uh, rod building, class 101. Uh, the rod is finished dried, and um, you can see that the, the, the two-way tape is still on both ends with the masking tape. What we're going to do first is take that off and then we're going to take a razor blade and carefully cut away the stuff that's not 
tied. And then we're going to open up the hole inside of this, and this is going to go on right to here. This, uh, this is, uh, you got to be a little careful when you're doing this, that you don't scratch, getting that two-way tape and all that stuff off without putting a mark in the rod blank is, is uh, it's a little bit time consuming, but um, you don't want to, you just don't want to ruin anything. Uh, you want to just cut through everything without damaging the pole. Now, down this end, it's not that important because if you do scratch it a little, it's no big deal. And then you, you, you want to, you don't want to be yanking on the threads that are covered un, even under the epoxy because the first coat's done really light. And if you get too aggressive, you can actually, pe the, the single one that you see here, I, I've been too aggressive and I've actually pulled a few of those off, which is um, not very good. See how that one's still hung in there? That's not a good thing. You want to cut that off so that, that like I said in the beginning, by doing it this way, the, uh, the sh this chevron is going to come right out of, out of inside of here. So there's no big, most rods you'll see, there'll be a big black uh, wrap here um, because they do it differently. But uh, the guy that taught me how to do it, he thought this was the best way to do it. And, you know, it looked, uh, it's the way I've always done them. The only time that I do one that it doesn't come out out of there is if, I do do some rods now with uh, a cork wrapped handle. On the cork wrapped handle ones, you need to uh, you need to have that that front thing on there, and they look okay. They they do look okay, but uh, they're not as nice as this setup. This is really a little time consuming, but it's well worth it in the end. Now this is the side you got to be really careful. You can see that I I have a couple little marks over here where it took some of the finish off. It's no big deal because that's going to get covered. But over here, you make a boo boo, and it's not a good thing. So there you go. We got the bulk of it off. Now we're going to take this back carefully. And the issue that was going on here, I'm building a pair of rods for this guy. And so when I get this one done, you, you got to make the other one exactly the same. And so we got it all cleaned up. Now we're going to put a little uh, denatured alcohol on here because to get rid of all the layout marks that we originally had. And you got to be really careful when you do this because... You know, this epoxy's only been drying for 24 hours. If you were to get get um, denatured alcohol on on the a finish up here, it wouldn't come off, but it would get sticky. So we're just making sure we have all the lines off um, that we put on there to, to lay it out. So now we're ready to put our cork on. So that's another whole, this is kind of mechanical. Um, you have a, a mandrel that's tapered just like a, a fishing rod and I'm going to run this mandrel through through here and you, you cut them counterclockwise until it's going to probably fit to about here and then this will have all two-way epoxy on it and we'll slide it up and, the, and uh, you put the mandrel in you turn counterclockwise and you just hold on and you you got to let the mandrel work a little and we're going to check it just to make sure that i'm i'm seeing correctly but i can tell just by eye already i'm not big enough but this is uh one of those things you measure you know measure it a couple times 
so that you're not see it's not not nearly deep enough and um, uh, all right so you see how that goes to there so now I'm gonna put glue from here down to here and the glue will act as a lubricant for that to slide on there so that's now that's now uh, you know the, the right diameter you know we're not going to need to mix much because that that is a really short butt but this stuff um, it's by eye after you get roughly 50 50 uh, of each component together you kind of just mix it up and it should look like I don't know bad snot when it's done so I put it a little heavy down here because when I put the real seat on the uh, and glue the real seat, there's a little bit of uh, distance from where where I fit fit the real seat. There's a little hollow spot in there, so I I put it on a little heavy, and then when I push the cork down, it drives all this uh, glue into this like there's maybe three-eighths of an inch here that wasn't glued the rest of this is glued obviously all this way but that first three-eighths of an inch could be an issue so then you just slide that on the stuff works as lubricant and you take it off and on cork you don't want to be too aggressive if this was a foam handle I would have put it on with a lot more force than what I do with uh, with cork, denatured alcohol. Now we leave the extra on here because we're going to slide a O-ring over this, which is called a check ring. And there's a million different ones of these. You, they have some with metal in them. All different things I'm I'm pretty much happy with uh, what I have here so this is gonna go a little tired till I hit the lube and then look even though the rods growing in diameter over that lube it slides right up there nicely and this is a, a check ring for uh, so that you know no liquid can can get inside under that cork I don't know. It 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 just fin it's just a finish ring. It makes it look much more professional when in, when I put those on, I think. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come up here and we're going to put some black thread, a blue ring, and then we're going to change over and do a silver ring. So it's going to be the same as what the what we have up here. Up here it's going to be silver with a small amount of blue with a black wrap. There'll be a small amount of blue showing here with the ring. So it kind of matches the same thing. Okay. So now we're ready to cover up the extra material that, that we have here on, on the pole. So um, this, is, this is how, this is to finish off the front boot on the, on the pole. So make a few wraps. Cut off the tail, take the magic tool, tighten everything up so it's nice and neat. And now we're going to uh, wrap over this. And on, 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 because of the thickness of the thread that we put on there to build, to build the uh, chevron, if you look really close, you can still see right there pots of the chevron sticking through this black so when that is the case I I go back over it and uh, make the thread two layers thick and then we're going to use the magic tool again tighten it up now we take an extra thread go inside go four wraps 
you go four or five wraps. Everybody has a little different. Some people only go three wraps. I don't see uh, I don't see much difference uh, in in what you're doing. Then you pull it through. Okay, so now to make the blue have the appearance that it's actually underneath this black thing, we're we're going to do a uh, eight turn wrap of of this so there's three four now after the fourth one we're going to take our clippers and we're going to clip off that tail end and then we're going to take the pull through so what this what we're what we're doing when i say pull through you pull the loose end back to the middle so we're going to go four times there's one two, three, four. So there's the fourth one. And you need to pull some slack. And even though when you pull slack, everything kind of jumps, which is very irritating. So I went through that loop. I pull, hold that with my finger, pull this down, and pull that through. Now once you've pulled it through, you use your magic tool and... Tighten it, tighten it up against that black before you cut the end off. Because if you don't have a really good turn or really tight setup, you only got four turns here. So, you know, when you're first learning, when you go with the magic tool to push that in, some people push it in so far the thing comes undone, which is really aggravating because that's really nice and tight. Let's look how straight in diameter it is. That's, that's the way it needs to look. It's, it's got to be neat and tight. And then, again, you go with the clipper, and you clip off the loose end, and it's done. And the final touch is to put a silver ring right here. So we're going to go one, two times. Put your finger on top. Go over. Go three times, four times. And we're gonna pull it up, snip it off, put it on my little hide, my little pull tag, go four more turns, one, two, three, four. And we're going to cut it off. Keep your finger on top of it, because if you don't, it'll all unravel. Go down through the loop. Grab onto the loop. Pull it through. Tighten everything up before you cut that tag off. Cut the tag off. That baby's ready to coat. I only mix one pump at a time. So there's one, there's one. Again, when you stir this up, you don't want to beat it like to make it foamy. If you read the instructions on this epoxy, it tells you to dump it out on a piece of uh, aluminum foil. It'll last a lot longer. I have some aluminum foil containers that I've mixed in. Uh, you just can't, you just can't fool around. Once you get it mixed up where it's clear, if you go to town and really get going on it and then heat it with a heat gun, uh, I've found that that's been really a good way to do it. So we're going to start down here and we're going to recoat uh, this section again because when you put on um you put on a diamond like this the um the extra thread makes it look a little uneven uh, so i tend to really coat this section of the rod really well so that it it doesn't have a uneven look that it looks even most people can't see it i can so 
uh, it gets extra material for me. There you go, Rod Building 101. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's how I do it. I know other people do it differently, but this is how I was taught by Don Salisbury, an A-class rod builder from Marathon, Florida. Taught me how to do this, and it's been, I haven't had any failures. Over and out. All right, hey, thanks for watching. Hey, Captain Greg is really, really good at what he does. He's meticulous about everything, his fishing and his rod building. So, hey folks, hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget when you're out here enjoying all this beautiful creation, take a moment to look up and give thanks. I'm Jim Hanley. See you in the next video.